हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी आर स्टार्टिंग अ न्यू टॉपिक दैट इज फेज इक्विलिवरियम फेज इक्विलिवरियम इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक फ्रॉम द थर्मोडाइनमिक्स एंड सेवरल क्वेश्चन आर आस्ट फ्रॉम दिस इन द सी एस आई आर नेट एग्जाम एंड ऑल्सो इन द गेट एग्जाम सो वी आर स्टार्टिंग ईयर द फेज इक्विलिवरियम इन ए वेरी शॉर्ट वे इन दिस वीडियो फर्स्टली वी विल अंडरस्टैंड अबाउट द फेज रूल ओके बिफोर अंडरस्टैंडिंग द फेज रूल वी शुड नो वी शुड हैव अ नॉलेज अबाउट द फेजेज कॉम्पोनेंट्स एंड द डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम ओके so firstly we see what is a phase a phase is a form of the matter that is uniform throughout a chemical composition and in the physical state when a matter has the same chemical composition and same physical state in whole the system then it is called a single phase suppose in a beaker this is a beaker and in this beaker we have water okay this is in liquid state this is the liquid water ओके नाउ द वाटर इज लिक्विड एंड इट्स केमिकल कंपोजिशन इज एच टू ओ सो इट विल कॉल वी विल कॉल इट ए सिंगल फेस दिस इज ए सिंगल फेस बिकॉज इट्स फिजिकल स्टेट इज सेम एंड इट्स केमिकल कंपोजिशन इज ऑल्सो सेम ओके नाउ इफ वी एड द एन एस सी एल और वी एड द शुगर इन दिस लिक्विड वाटर इफ वी एड द शुगर देन आफ्टर सम टाइम दिस शुगर गेट डिजोल्व दिस शुगर विल गेट डिजोल्व इन दिस लिक्विड वाटर and it forms a homogeneous solution now the solution is homogeneous in all the direction we can see it is a homogeneous solution so its physical state in all the points is same and its chemical composition at all the points is also same so we will call that this is a single phase now another condition may happen if this is water in half of the beaker there is water now we add the oil to it if we are adding oil to it now what happens there will be two different layers one of water and one of oil both the layers are separable from each other we can see them so these are the two different phases because both have the different physical state and different chemical composition we can identify them so there are two phases now okay so we can say that when a, when we take a mixture of gases then they are homogeneous so they will form a single phase when there are liquids and two miscible liquids if the liquids can mix then they will form single phase suppose we take water and we mix alcohol in it then they will form a single phase if there are two miscible liquids such as we have said that water and oil then they will form two different phases in solids they forms different phases if we take a crystal of the solid then it will be homogeneous in all the direction so it forms a single phase and if we takes two metals then they will form two different phases although it may happen when the two two metals are miscible they can be mixed and can form the alloy then they will form a single phase okay now see the another point we have understand about the phase now we see component phase is denoted by p and the component we denoted by c what is a component a chemically independent constituent of the system that is called the component it means it will have a chemical identification and if we say about the constituent what is constituent any chemical species is called a constituent and here we are not we cannot it compare it with the constituent this is not constituent the number of components is given by the minimum number of the types of independent species that are necessary to define the composition of all the phases present in the system we will not take all the chemical species we have to take the minimum number of the independent species that are necessary to define the composition of all the phases suppose we have taken a mixture of h2o and nacl now if we see this solution in this solution there will be h2o as one chemical species another will be na plus and another will be chloride ion na plus and cl minus so if we see the chemical species there are three chemical species h2o na plus and cl minus there are three species h2o na plus and cl minus but 
we can see that here the Na plus and Cl minus both are forming from NaCl. So their stoichiometric ratio will be same 1 is to 1. So we don't want both of them. We can identify the phases only by one concentration of one of the ion. Only the concentration of one ion is necessary to define the composition of the system. So we will take any, any one of them. If we take Na plus, then there is one con one component of this. And one component is this. So there are two components in this system. Okay, then the next thing that is degree of freedom. Very important point. What is degree of freedom? The number of independent variables. What is independent variables? Variables means that we want to vary, vary in a system, in a reaction such as temperature or pressure or concentration of any of the reactant. So the number of independent variables that must be specified to define the system completely. That is called the degree of freedom and we define it by F. We denote it by F. Okay, we can understand it with the help of the example. For example, if we take a one component system such as water system. In water system, there may be three different cases. First case is when only a liquid water is present in the system. Now only liquid water is present. The phase is here phase will be one because only liquid water is present. Now component here the component is also one. Okay. Now, how much variables here are needed to define the system? We can change how much variables we can change in the system without changing, without disturbing the system. Okay, the, here we can see that the only liquid water is present. So, we can change the temperature. There will be no change in the system. We can also change the pressure. Then there will be no change in the system. System remains as it is. It means the water remains liquid in all the conditions. So we can define both the pressure and the temperature. Two things, two variables we can vary. So our degree of freedom will be here 2. Okay. Now see the another equilibrium. When there are two phases in equilibrium, liquid water and water vapors, when these are in equilibrium then what will be the condition okay now we can see that here the phases are two one phase is liquid and another is the vapor so phases are two but component is one h2o now how much we can vary the variables without disturbing the system if we vary the pressure if we are varying the pressure then we should remain the temperature constant because if we if we vary both the variables pressure and temperature then the system will disturb it will remain either in the vapor state or in the liquid state but there will be no equilibrium so we can vary only one either pressure or temperature it means the degree of freedom here is one now in this condition we will say that the system is univariant here the system is bivariant because there are two variables here one variable so univariant now see the another condition when there are three phases in equilibrium liquid water water vapors and the solid water it means ice three phases are in equilibrium this happens at the triple point now you can see here the phases are three but the component is only one h2o okay now at this point we cannot vary the pressure if we vary the pressure, the system will disturb. It will not be the three phases will not be in the equilibrium. If we vary the pressure and or if we vary the temperature, then also the system will be disturbed and there will remain only two phases. So there is exactly only a single pressure and a single temperature at which the three phases remains in equilibrium. This point is called the triple point. So here the degree of freedom is zero we, because we cannot vary any of the variables so the degree of freedom here is zero this point is called the triple point okay now we comes to the phase rule the phase rule is given by the jw gibbs and it is a very important rule 
sometimes questions are asked on it and the phase rule is in order to in order to find out the degree of freedom there is a rule that is called the phase rule that is f is equal to c minus p plus 2 now here c is the com number of components p is the number of phases and f is the degree of freedom by this formula we can calculate the degree of freedom for example when the two phases liquid water and water vapors are in equilibrium now you can see here that the phase is two two phases are here liquid and vapor component is one h2o so degree of freedom will be c minus p plus two one minus two plus two it means one so our degree of freedom is one it means system is univariant we can vary either pressure or temperature we cannot vary both of them okay now see another condition when liquid water and water vapors are in equilibrium at one atmospheric pressure now here the pressure is constant we have given the pressure is one atmosphere it means pressure is held constant here so our one variable is here constant now the rule will be like this f is equal to c minus p plus 1 because we have reduced one of our variables so here the condition will be like this 1 minus 2 plus 1 okay so in this way we will get degree of freedom is here 0 okay now see the third condition when we have a mixture of h2 gas o2 gas and h2o gas okay there may be two different conditions one condition is that when we take the mixture of three gases h2o2 and h2o in that condition the phases will be one because the gases forms a single phase component will be three because we are taking the mixture of three different gases so their con their concentration will be different and we have to know all of them okay then the degree of freedom will be given by c minus p plus 2 it means 3 minus 1 plus 2 that will be equal to 4 so degree of freedom will be 4 it means the variables are 4 temperature pressure and the concentration of two of the components now there may be another condition when we have given a system when the when these three things are formed by the decomposition of water vapors then there will be a equilibrium of type this h2o is in equilibrium with 2h2 2h2o plus is forming 2h2 plus o2 this type of equilibrium will be then present okay so if we know the concentration of h2o then we can find out the concentration of this and this because there is a equilibrium and we know that the h2 and o2 are in the ratio of 2 is to 1 so if we know the concentration of it then we can easily find out the concentration of this and this so here the component will be 1 phase is already 1 so our formula becomes 1 minus 1 plus 2 so here the degree of freedom will be 2 ok now see the another example when we have given a mixture of calcium carbonate solid CaO solid and CO2 gas ok in this case also there may be two different condition when we take a mixture of this then in that case the number of phases we know that the solids form different phases so two phases are this and one phase is this so three phases okay now the components when we are taking the mixture then their concentrations will be different and we should know the concentration of all of them to identify to define the system so the components will be three so the value of f will be c minus p plus 2 it means 3 minus 3 plus 2 it means the degree of freedoms will be 2 okay 
Now, if we have given a mixture such that these two are forming by the decomposition of calcium carbonate, these two are forming by the decomposition of calcium carbonate, then there will be an equilibrium of type this. If we have given such type of equilibriums, then we, we have not needed the concentration of all the components to be known. Because if we know the concentration of this and this, then we can identify the con concentration of this. And if we have given this and this, then we can find out the concentration of this. So we should know only the two components and third one we can identify. So here the number of components will be 2 and the phases are already 3. So F will be equal to 2 minus 3 plus 2. Okay. Here the degree of freedoms will be 1. Okay, now see one example that has been asked in the CSIR net exam June 2013. The question is a system consists of gaseous H2O2 and H2O and CO2 where the amount of CO2 is specified and the equilibrium constant for the reaction to H2 gas plus O2 gas giving H2O gas is known. The number of degree of freedom is. Okay, so in this question, we have to find out the degree of freedom, number of degree of freedom. And we have given this type of equilibrium. When we have given the equilibrium of such type, it means we know the equilibrium constant and we know that the ratio of the H2 and O2 is 2 is to 1. Okay, the equilibrium is given. So by this, we can find out the concentration of two of them if we know one of them. So, here out of these three, H2O2 and H2O, only one's concentration is we need. So, here the component for these three will be one. One component is needed in these three. Now, CO2, the amount of CO2 is specified. So, another component is CO2. It means the number of components will be here, two. And the gases forms a single phase. It means the number of phases is 1. Now I apply the formula. F is equal to C minus P plus 2. Okay, put the values 2 minus 1 plus 2. So our value comes 3. Okay, so here the degree of freedom is 3. So we should know the 3 degrees of freedom, 3, va three variants we should know for defining this system. Okay, so this is all about the phase rule. In our next video, we will see some more things about the phase equilibrium and the questions related to NET and the GATT exam. Thank you.